Go ahead and grab your Bibles. Those that are watching, please share this. Please share. Go ahead and share it. Grab your Bibles. We're going to the book of Galatians chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 1. Galatians 5, and we're going to read 1 through 5. Those that are watching, grab your Bibles. And I want to give you another scripture while you're looking for that one. Mark that. I want you to also mark John 8, 36. Galatians 5, 1 through 5. We'll read that. Then I also want to read John 8 and 36. Thank you, Lord. Give you guys a minute and we'll read it. Those that are watching, get your Bible. Go ahead and share this. Share it. Share it. Galatians 5 and 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law you are fallen from grace for we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith to go to John 8 and 36 John 8 and 36 says if the son therefore shall make you free you shall be free indeed amen you may be seated Bless you, Lord. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be freed. I want to I talk about living without restraints. I want to I talk about living without restraints. Um, in Galatians chapter 5, it says, stand, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. It's interesting as, as, as Paul is explaining this, and, and you have to read chapter 4 as well because he's given this uh, explanation of Abraham's life and, and the two children, the two sons that's born by him. And I'll reference that, but I want you to, when you get a chance, to go back and read Galatians chapter 4. And I'll reference it. But I want to talk about liberty and what it really means to be free. God's been dealing with me about just this ability, he was talking to me initially about my faith, that my faith was without restraints, that there's nothing hindering me from believing whatever I want to believe. Yes. And, and, and as I looked at that, um, God just began to really uh, cause me to press in that we can live a certain kind of way, that we really, really, really can live free, but we're not taught it neither do we believe it. And so I want to challenge you a little bit this morning. I, I, I want to I challenge your thinking. I want to challenge where you are in life as believers because God has done something absolutely incredible in our lives. And the majority of us as believers are not living like that. We're just not living free. And so uh, just to take a minute, the word liberty means to live or to be without restraints. In other words, there is nothing keeping you from doing great things in your life. That there's nothing holding you that really, when you accept Jesus Christ, you literally are free. You, you're free to be great. You're free to live boldly. You're free to live without fear. You're free to prosper. You're free to have joy. I mean, you are literally free. Somebody getting it. And, and, and the challenge is, Paul says, you're going to have to stand fast in that or persevere. In other words, there are things that's going to come into your life to convince you that you're not free. Yeah. That there are things that's going to happen in your life that's going to speak loudly to you and directly to you to make you think that you are not free. And so here's what happens that Paul warns you, that, that when you accept Christ, you're free. You can be bold, you can be courageous, you can be innovative, you can just go for it. Then something hits you, life circumstances, something happens. And so what we do as humans is that we begin to try to uh, 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 produce something or make ourselves free. Yeah. 
See, listen to what he said. He says, if you live by the law, in other words, if, if I begin to, to decide to engage uh, in my efforts to achieve what I believe God has already given me, I make what God has given me of no effect. Listen, to, let me say this again. You made free by grace. You didn't do nothing to be free. Christ died on a cross. He made you free. He gave you the ability or the capacity to be bold, courageous, that you can go after. It. And then something happens and you start trying. Or, or you believe it's your efforts that's going to get you there. And so what happens when you live according to rules or you live according to things that you think that's going to make you successful, you, you eliminate. Or the Bible says you make Christ of no effect. In other words, the grace of God, which you didn't earn, which you didn't have to do anything to get. Now, all of a sudden, you think you got to earn something. Yeah. And it's, it, it, it's really attacking and challenging what you believe. And so here's what Paul says. And I want you to focus on verse 5 with me for a minute. Well, let me reference John 8 and 36. Because I want you to get this in your spirit. It says, whom the Son set free is free indeed. The word indeed means really. Yeah. Whom the Son set free is really free. Yeah. Somebody get that. Somebody grab that in your spirit. Whom he set free is really free. Now, the challenge for you is that according to Galatians 5 and 5 is that you have to wait for. You have to wait for the hope of righteousness. It literally means that you are fully expecting and anticipating with pleasure the liberty that he's given you. So let me give you an example because I was, I, was, I was in the back end, I was in the office, and I was thinking about my own life. And, and I want to share from a personal perspective. Is that you don't realize how you're living in bondage. Until you really see that there are many things that you won't do, that you won't go for, or places you won't go, or things you won't see, or people you won't talk to, or stuff you won't even try. Because you're afraid. I told y'all, I was in the Air Force, I got out, and because of fear, for 27 years. I remember being invited to speak at a, a conference, they was going to do a conference on a cruise. And I was going to have to fly there. And I, I, I was like, I ain't going. Remember that? It was a marriage conference. It's paying for everything. But because I had to fly, I can't get there. On the, I ain't driving to California, so I ain't going. <laughs> when I think back over my life, how many opportunities I missed. How many things I turned down. How many things I would not do. Because I was afraid. Yeah. But I'm saved, but living in bondage. Yeah. I'm telling somebody gonna get help this morning. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing my perspective because y'all think preachers don't go through this. This is everybody. See, Jesus came and I'm supposed to be free indeed. But was I really free? Was I really living free? So 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 what happened in my life, and God spoke this to me, and this blessed me. Is that many of us won't go because we're waiting on a feeling. We wait in a feel a certain kind of way. Like all of a sudden you wake up and feel like, oh, okay, I can fly now. No, 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 don't work that way. So, so what happens is you can wait all your life for a feeling that ain't coming. And so here's what God showed me. And this, is, this will translate to any area of your life. The first time I had to f uh, fly after that 27-year hiatus, I asked Beverly to fly with me. And she was kind enough to come with me on this business trip that she had. I was like, she just in the hotel doing nothing. She had nothing to do. And so I flew, and she flew with me. And I'm telling you, I'm terrified. I'm on this plane, and, and, and what's happening to me, all I can think about while I'm flying it's flying. Somebody hear me. The only thing I can think about, I hear every sound on a plane. I hear every noise. I feel every bump. I, I hear everything, and, and everything is mortifying me. And so Beverly, literally, my wife just sweet. She hold my hand on the plane. Like, I think she's going to save me or something happening. And uh, 
we get there, and I can't even focus in the meeting because I'm still afraid. I'm in the meeting, and I mean, my heart's still racing because we got off the plane, you know, and, and, and I just remember, I can't settle myself. And flew home, same thing, she, she sat next to me, and, and I don't speak to her the whole time. Because I can't, I'm terrified. I don't, even, I don't say a word. We're on a plane, I'm like this. <laughs> and we get home, and in my mind, I go, I ain't never doing that again. But I have to, because now the Ferguson thing happened. They wanted me to come speak. Out in, I had to go to North Carolina, and they wanted me to come. I'm like, Lord. <laughs> so Beverly don't go this time. Because she got stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I want somebody to hear me. And I'm, I'm engaging. Now, I'm terrified. I'm on a plane this time, and, 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 and I fly. And, and then I got to fly again. And then we all went to Disney World with, with a group of people, and they flew, and we drove, and Friday we were leaving. And I was like, I'm so tired of driving. <laughs> And it was home in two hours, and we ain't even out of Florida yet in two hours. And but I was still afraid. But our next year, we flew, the whole family. Then we flew to a marriage cruise. And then we flew. Now, I want y'all to hear me. I am not flying liking it. Somebody forgot to follow me. But what's happening that I do not realize is that fear slowly no longer has dominion over me. Yeah. I want you to understand something because we miss this. We're waiting to feel different. But what God showed me is that every time I flew, I was breaking fear's dominion over me, but I still felt afraid. And he said this to me. He says, how you feel has nothing to do with dominion. Hallelujah. I literally, each time I flew, took dominion over fear. It's because the feeling of it didn't freeze me anymore. The feeling of it didn't hinder me anymore. The feeling didn't deny me opportunities anymore. See, we're living lives, and, and we won't live in the, the liberty that God has given. See, living without restraint simply means that the thing can't hold me no more. It can't stop me anymore. So the more I flew, the more I, I was getting free. I didn't even realize. I did not realize that I was walking out by faith what God has spoken in his word. See, it says that you have to wait for the hope of righteousness through faith. The word wait for means to fully expect and, 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 and to hope is talking about uh, uh, anticipating with pleasure. And so what it said is that while I'm doing what I'm doing in fear, I'm fully expecting and anticipating with pleasure not to be afraid no more. Yeah. Now what y'all don't understand is that fear is a feeling, but I got to a point that I wasn't afraid, but I still felt fear. Y'all missed this. I wasn't afraid to fly. I just felt some kind of way. Yeah. 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 Quit connecting your emotions yeah. with the reality of your victory. Yeah. See, see, God had given me victory, but I felt some kind of way, so I wasn't sure if I was winning. <laughs> but I looked back and went, hey, I'm winning. I'm going where well. I went to New York. I, I'm like, this is good. Now, where are we going next? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I want y'all to get this. You can live free. I don't care how you feel. You, can, you want a great marriage? Let me, let me tell you how this works. Forget first, because it says stand fast in liberty. So the first thing I do, I forget how I feel. So this is going to help somebody. I forget how I feel, 
and I start engaging, fully expecting the outcome of what God promised. Yeah. Anticipating with pleasure. So let's say you want a great marriage and your wife uh, or your husband are, is not receptive to your kindness. Yeah. You just keep engaging in kindness fully anticipating with pleasure Forget, you, it ain't about how you feel. Dominion is doing something in contradiction to how you feel. I have dominion because I can do it even though I shouldn't be doing it. See, see you think, listen, listen, God keeps showing this to me. You think that you got to feel some kind of way first. Greatness becomes... You become great because you can do something excellent even when you don't feel excellent. Yes. Yes. See, winners win because they go after it even when they don't feel like going after it. You are a champion because you can still get it when everybody else don't want to get it no more. See, see we, we're bound and we're restrained by our soul man, our soulish man, how we feel. But Jesus says this, he's trying to help you, he's trying to help you. So let's say you're stuck. Because you can get stuck. You can get in a place where you're stuck or you can't make it. You can't push yourself. You can't go after it. He says in Colossians 3 and 2, and I want to give you this. Set your affections. Yes. Set. Set your affection on things above, not on things on this earth. Now, I want to stop there. Um, all through Scripture, I noticed this. God speaks to us from a posture of freedom. Somebody catch this. He says, set your affection. Yes. That means you're free to determine how you think. Hallelujah. He says to you, be of good cheer. Yes. He didn't say wait for somebody to cheer you up. He says, be cheerful. You're free to have joy. Nobody can make you not be joyful. You just have to decide to be joyful. Somebody go get free today. See, you're living in bondage because you're choosing to be in bondage. If you accept that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you are free indeed. See, I woke up today realizing that I can live the kind of life that I want to live. I don't need your permission to be great. I don't need your permission to have joy. I don't need your permission to have peace. I don't need your permission to be a champion. I don't need... Why? Because I'm free. No restraints. Nothing holding me. People don't hold me. Emotions don't hold me. Feelings don't hold me. What you think don't hold me. What I think don't hold me. Somebody ought to be shouting right now. Somebody ought to be saying amen right now. You can live how you want to live in Jesus. When I went, listen, now, this was an epiphany. When I got the epiphany that I was winning over fear, I was like, man. Because you think you're losing because you still feel fearful. Yeah. See, you can decide right now. Jesus Christ came, y'all. He died on the cross to make you free. This is why he says, stand fast in the liberty in which Christ has set you free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We getting entangled with stuff again that God has made you free from because you won't believe that you're free. You got to believe you're free. You got to believe that you're free. I ain't talking, listen, 
how you feel is only a present reality, but it's not a future destination. See, where I feel today don't dictate where I'm going tomorrow. I can look anything in the eye in Christ. That's why the Bible says that all things are possible when you believe. This is why the Bible says that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. This is why he keeps speaking to you from a a perspective, a, a posture of liberty because he knows you free. You just don't know you free. He knows you free. He knows you free. He knows you free. Hallelujah. He look, listen, I guarantee you, the angels in heaven sitting around looking at y'all going, why, why they ain't moving? Why, why, they, why they don't go for it? Why they don't just go do it? Why, 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 why they sitting waiting? Who, why they waiting on approval? Why they won't go because this person said they can't do it? Yeah. Why are they crying over here when they can just get up and go win? Yeah. Why, why, why are they over here and already quit when ain't nobody stopping them? Ain't even no barriers in their way. Why they... Thank you, why? Why ain't you going for it? Why ain't you doing it? Why ain't you believing it? I'm going to say this to you. It's never going to happen waiting for it to happen. You are free to radically transform and change your life right now. Liberty means without restraints. Literally, the only thing that's holding you is you. Satan can't stop you. He's already been defeated. Sin can't stop you. It's already been defeated. The grave can't even stop you. So then why are you living like something is stopping you? I want you to look at your life today. The areas that you call in bondage. Now, if you don't know Jesus, you really are in bondage. So anybody I'm talking to today, if you're here, if you're watching, and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you really are in bondage. You're not free. You can't do what you want to do. It's going to hold you. But those of you who have accepted Jesus Christ, you should not be living like people that don't know him. This is what taints our witness, that we say we accept Jesus and live like people who don't know Jesus. But I'm convinced nobody's told you that you can live free. We watch people who've been incarcerated be released and still live like they're incarcerated. I mean, literally, we had, a, we had a guy living in one of the houses we owned, and we had a whole kitchen right next to his room. And he cooked on a hot plate in his room for at least a year. Because his room, listen, all his, he stacked up his toilet paper and paper towels and canned goods just like he was in prison. Now, his door is open. He can walk out any time, but he don't. He cooks in his room with this electric hot plate. He got a little TV. His room, it looked just like a jail cell. Because it's as if he did not know he was free. Well, I want to I wanna, I wanna challenge you this morning. How many Christians are living like that? No joy, no peace, no courage. 
But you know Jesus, you've been baptized, you're speaking in tongues, you're doing all this stuff, you come to Bible study, but you live just like you're still in prison. So the Spirit of the Lord has come to set you free. To challenge you this morning that you are free indeed. I I want you to get that scripture. Just if you don't remember anything this morning, remember John 8 and 36. It says, whom the Son shall make free is free indeed. It means really that you are really free. So I want you to look at your life and the things you're calling roadblocks. You're free. The things that's hindering you free. Listen, I, I want to push you a little bit further. Even money. I dealt with fear because y'all can relate to fear, but y'all also struggle with money. Why are you struggling with money? And you think because you need a better job. You may, you may need a better job. But your real issue is that you don't believe. You don't believe you can do things beyond the money that you have. You've limited your living based on what you see. And the just shall live by faith, not by sight. See, you will never go forward because you don't see the resources. You will never go forward because you don't see the resources. But faith don't require I see the resources. Faith means I see Jesus as the resource. See, if he says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, then why am I not trying all these things? Now, I learned that from my wife because she was going after stuff by faith that was scaring the life out of me. But listen, this was still connected to my fear of flying. I wasn't just afraid to fly. I was afraid to live. I like being comfortable. I like being in spaces that I controlled. All while I'm quoting scriptures. That's going to help somebody. I, I, I lived in my own prison. It may have been bigger than the room I just described because mine had a flat screen in it. But I was still in bondage. See, y'all think you're free because you got nice stuff in your jail. (laughs) But you ain't free until it's not a jail no more. I can walk out this way. Or I can walk out that way. Or I can walk. See, when I'm restrained, I can't go left because all my good stuff on the right. (laughs) And you deceive yourself in thinking that you're living in liberty because your jail bigger than his jail. Yeah. So we talk of my, I got a better. You bragging, but you both in jail. You got an eight by eight, and they got a four by four, and somebody else got a twelve by twelve, and all y'all bragging, but I ain't got no walls. <laughs> I'm just walking around doing free stuff. Going where I want to go. Seeing who I want to (laughs) see. Y'all, y'all hear me this morning? Somebody need to get a hold of this and change your life. Lift up your heads. The everlasting king. The king of glory. I I can see it right now. I only got a little bit of time left. Jesus is praying in a garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane, Y'all know what I'm saying. He's praying and I can't pronounce that word. And he's praying. And and it's like my daughter, she's always laughing at me, her and Chris. But it's okay. I'm free. I can say what I want to (laughs) say. But anyway, he's praying. And he's saying, Lord, if you can remove this cup, they say praying, and it's like sweat coming off like blood. And he's praying because in that moment of prayer, he's in restraint. But he get up. (laughs) He get up 
and chooses to be free. He gets up and says, not my will. See, my will restrains me. But your will, ain't no restraints on the will of God. There's no restraints on what he can do. There's no restraints on what he'll say to you. There's no restraints on the doors that he'll open, the resources he'll give you, the people he'll bring into your life. Not my will. But your will, that's unstoppable, unmovable, unshakable, your will. Your will. Your will, God. God, go tell you to, to wreck the tower. You free. Go erect it, because it's his will. You restrain by the limitations of your flesh. Your soulish man, what you think, what you feel, and what you want. It restrains you. But your spirit man, the Holy Ghost, he's free. And if he's in me, I'm free indeed. That's why Paul says circumcision don't mean nothing. That was a fleshly agreement between God and man. Jesus came and put to death the likeness of sinful flesh so you can be free. Y'all stand to your feet. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Sometimes it's challenging dealing with free people. <laughs> we we get it like like we be in our board meetings and stuff and or meetings and it's like because we think different. Like, we don't see obstacles like that anymore. I mean, we know it's challenging, but we don't. <laughs> Free people have a different language. Free people are going to challenge you to go beyond what you used to go on. Now, it's exciting, but it's sometimes some disappointments along the way. Sometimes you fall and you got to get back up. Sometimes it don't even go the way you think it's going to go. But that's the cool thing about freedom is that it's just free to go. I told you worry is because we have an expectation of something that's going to happen in the future that's negative. Well, what if you shift that? What, if, what, what Paul is teaching here is that, that when you wait for the hope of righteousness, you fully expect, but with anticipation of something in pleasure. He's really defining the opposite of worry. And we do that through faith. So I want to challenge you this morning as you're here. Maybe your life, you're looking at your life and, and you want to break out and you're going, God, I, I want to live boldly and I want to live courageously. I want to challenge you and I'm just going to say, do it then. You're free. You're free to do it. You're free to be bold. You're free to have a great marriage. You, you're free to be the best football player on the team. Yeah, yeah, y'all too young guys, y'all. You're free to be the best small business owner. You, you're free to be the best neural 
pathologists on the country. You free, you, you free to go for things that nobody else will go for. You are free to do it. You're free to be the best. You are free to be the greatest. You're free to prosper. Anybody here struggling financially, you are free to prosper. You don't have to live in lack. You really don't. But be prepared to wait for the hope. Listen, the first plane ride wasn't easy for me. Neither was the second or the tenth. But what I didn't know was each time I stepped in the door, I was getting dominion. Each, each time I sat in that seat, I was breaking the bondage that it had over my life. And I don't know if I'm ever going to enjoy it. But it ain't going to stop me. See, you're going to look up next. And we're going to be in Hawaii. Because I couldn't drive there. I, I, I'm going to some places I've been seeing. And I've never been before. Oh, I'm going now. See, see. And it's not like I'm going, I can't wait to get on a plane. That is not what I'm saying. I can't wait to get to Hawaii. The plane is just necessary. <laughs> Somebody hear me, hear what I'm saying? Dominion and liberty is having authority above your emotions, above what people think, above what you think, above what people want you to do. I know all y'all want me to go work in a factory, but what if your child want to be a movie star? What if they want to dance? What if they want to do something that you was too afraid to do? What if they want to play pro football? Well, you better get full back up. No, go for it. Go for it. Believe it. Just because nobody else believe it don't mean you can't believe it. You want to be a what? Uh, I can't even spell what you want to be. But you believe it, and you're free to do it. Some of y'all parents, this extra, get out the way. Just thank God that they bold enough to do something you didn't have the courage to do. Because it's going to turn around and bless you. I feel good y'all I feel good I'm telling you free is better than bondage free feel good I'm telling you free look good on you you glow a little bit more you feel better you walk with a little swag all right I'm supposed to be praying y'all let me I, I just feel good. I feel good. I feel, I feel good. You know what's really good about freedom? You can walk away from stuff. See, people don't get that. They think you bound to this and you bound to that. They don't know we'll walk away. Them. Bye. I'm free. I'm free to change my mind. I don't owe nobody nothing but to love them. I'm free in Jesus. Telling y'all freedom. Freedom in Christ. Liberty. No restraints. Owe no man nothing. Free. Don't you run, Greeley. I might run with you. I'm telling you. I might run with you. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> yeah! Woo! Yeah! Hallelujah! Hey! Hallelujah! Hey! Hallelujah! Hey! Hallelujah! Hey! Yeah!
Yeah! Yeah! I'm telling you, y'all don't understand. He couldn't even walk two weeks ago. <laughs> now he out here running because he's free. He's free. Bless you, Lord. Hey, hallelujah, God. Hey, hallelujah, God. Hey, hey, hallelujah, God. Hey, 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 hallelujah, God. All right, all right, y'all. Woo! I hope they're running at home. I hope they're running in their office. Somebody get free right now. Somebody watching this right now. Wipe your eyes. Lift your head up. You free indeed in Christ. Yeah. 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 Yes. Father God, I want to say thank you. I thank you for setting us free. God, I thank you for everybody that's watching. God, if they don't know you, that they would come to know you. God, that they need the Listen, it is liberty in Jesus. I don't care what they've told you, but it's liberty in Christ. You can live without restraint. You can live boldly and courageously. You can be great in your life. You can do what it is that God sets in your heart to do. Mm. Nothing's impossible. Nothing's impossible, said the Lord. Nothing's impossible if you can just believe me. Come on, lift your hand. I'm going to let you go. Come on. Father God, I want to say thank you. God, I pray right now, everybody that don't know you, that they can call in right now. I don't know if we got this uh, got it up on the screen, but or go to our website. Go to rnrchurch.org. Listen, just message us. We, we want to connect with you. We want to walk with you because there's some free folk in here. Father God, I thank you right now for letting us walk in this liberty, that we're standing fast in a liberty wherewith you have set us free. God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a hand praise.